Hello everybody. My name is Tiffany. I'm the Tipsy Artist. We are going live to teach you how to paint this super cute old-fashioned barn for Christmas. We have some really awesome painting kits that go with this. Let me get some stuff moved around. All right, so let's talk about our supplies first here. Okay. We've got some acrylic paint here. Oops, let me make sure I get that in the shot. Ta-da! <laughs> okay. And then we have um, our, all of our tools that come with this, and then the canvas and the graphite paper, traceable line art. Let's get a visual back on that. All right, so basically um, you'll get a really cute box from us. It'll have all your supplies and all of this line art that's done for you makes the process very simple. And hello to everybody out there joining us today. We're so glad you're here. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave those uh, below. And I always get back to everybody after the class. So again, thank you so much for joining us here today. All right, so this is our line art. And the first thing that we do, let's talk about how to apply this onto the canvas. So I've got my canvas underneath here. It is only taped up here at the top. I will actually secure the graphite paper first, and I'll only tape up here at the top for that. And, uh, but one, two, three pieces of tape is all you really need. That secures it. And again, it's very important that you have that flexibility to continually continually lift up through the process so that you see the image below on your canvas there. So I just center that, then I take uh, my line art and I center this as well. Now some things you want to be careful of, if you're doing this on 11 by 14 you'll have plenty of room. If you're doing it on the 8 by 10 it's more of a snug fit, so you do want to make sure that you position it to where you do have a little bit of space here uh, between your lettering and the top. And then we design it to where you always have enough of the image to, you know, sometimes it will have a little bit of overflow, that's okay. But you definitely want to make sure all of your lettering is on the surface area. So we're in good shape here. And then we do have a little bit of overflow here at the bottom where some will run off, but that's okay. So you can see how it still gets the important stuff there. All right, then what you'll do is you'll take the pencil that comes with your kit here, and then you'll just start to go over all of the work that we've done. So the lettering took me a pretty fair amount of time. You can kind of see how I had to really color all that in. And then all the lines here. So I'll do that with my pencil first. Then your kit also comes with a permanent marker as well. So as soon as I'm done doing all of the transfer with the pencil, basically what it will look like, it will look just like a pencil line on your canvas. So it will be light. And I do highly recommend using, especially for beginners, using the permanent marker to go ahead and go over everything. So basically every single place that you still see your graphite line as a process here on the surface area, I'll take my permanent marker and go ahead and go over all of that. And then it creates this beautiful um, black line work that makes it very easy to paint into. Almost as if you had like a silk screen design to work with. So that's really nice. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and remove this. I just take a pair of scissors here. And just kind of see, just right there, just kind of snip that. And then be free. It is gone. Okay. So now we have our painting all ready to go. This can just go ahead and go into the trash. Um, I will tell you though that the graphite paper oftentimes can have many multiple uses. Um, oh, one more thing I want to be sure I tell you. I can't remember if I said this or not. But when you place your graphite paper down on your surface area, you always want to make sure that the dull gray side faces up and then the black shiny side faces the canvas. That's super important or else it won't transfer any of the image. So important message there. All right, so I can go ahead and place that off to the side here. All right, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I've got my little plate nearby of paint. I do have a little bit of a head start here with my titanium white and then also some Mars Black, I just tend to use so much of that as I go. I go ahead and get a little bit of that out to start with. 
And then the first thing that we'll go ahead and get started with is actually our sky. So I'm going to be using some primary cyan blue. Let's do just a nice nickel size amount of that. Let's also take some of our Viridian. And by the way, um, yours will be brand new. So there's a little silver foil lining on top there that you will have to remove. It just lifts right off. So if it's not quite coming out, that is why it has that protective seal over the top. All right, so it's, we have some Viridian and then also some primary cyan blue. And then I'm going to go ahead and start uh, with our Mama brush. This is the largest brush that I have. Your kit comes with three different brushes. So we've got the Mama brush and then uh, Little Buddy and then also a Little Bit. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pick up a nice big dollop of our Titanium White. And then let's do a little touch of the Primary Cyan Blue. We'll start a little smaller there and then a little touch of the Viridian. Let's go ahead and mix all those together. So again, it was a much bigger dollop of the white, and then just small touches of the blue and the Viridian, and that brings us to a turquoise color very quickly. All right, so we have this to work with here. We're gonna go ahead and start to position this into our sky. I'm going to add just a little touch of water and we're going to go ahead and push this into our background. What's really wonderful is that our permanent marker will start to bleed through here. Now one of the things I will tell you is that if you do happen to be, sometimes we can be pretty heavy handed and this particular color has really good coverage. So if you do happen to cover up all of your lettering and you really can't make it out whenever you're done, don't panic, that's okay. It's actually, you know, it's a good thing, it's fine. But just wait for it to completely dry when you're done. And then you can actually just cut out this section here, the trace and the graphite paper, and then just tape that down right over that section and retrace at the very end. So that's certainly an option. Now the way that I'll apply this paint, there's a couple of different ways. If you want it to kind of a textural fun, you can do little crisscross strokes like this. Or you can just do really fluid, smooth, horizontal strokes back and forth. That's also really pretty. And you can pick up a little bit of white as you go and just kind of push that back and forth in there. Let's add a little bit more of that water. And then that will give us a really nice fluid, smooth stroke. It's really easy to press down back and forth. Helps that paint move. So again, we're using our turquoise and a little bit of that white. And as the paint begins to dry, it will also, you'll see your trace kind of peek through too. It's a little bit subtle here for y'all, but it will start to peek through there. And we'll continue to work this through our background. Still pushing into a little bit of our white and also that turquoise that we mixed up. Let's grab a little bit more water, help extend that paint. All right, now we're needing to do a little bit of some cut-in work. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the brush and hold it a little bit more like a pencil that will give me a nice thin line edge. That helps me cut in around the shape here. Got a little more water there. And if you need to feather this back in, feel free to do that. Just lots of repetition, lots of crisscross back and forth. Again, don't forget about your water. That helps extend the paint a little bit. 
With these smaller canvas, I tend to really enjoy working a lot more with the canvas on a flat surface. That way you can be a lot more flexible with your water and you never have to worry about water runs. So I honestly do not prefer the easel. I prefer flat surface when working with these smaller paintings. It just gives you a lot more control. And again, no water runs. So that's a nice feeling. A little bit easier for beginners to control that way. Do a little bit of cut in around our trees here. And now I need to make sure I feather that out back into that background so that it all looks like it blends and belongs. Just cross that out just a bit. All right, wonderful. Okay, so we have all of our beautiful background done now. That's awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse this out. Dry this off a little bit here. All right, next up we're going to go ahead and work on our beautiful barn. So really fast and easy cheat is you can actually let the white of your canvas be your white. You don't even have to paint it if you don't want to. We are going to go ahead and paint it today though. We're adding oh, just a little bit of our white but also just a tiny little hint of gray. So I'm just going to barely touch into that black and you can see it's so tiny. I mean just be really cautious with that. Super, super light. And then again, a little bit of water on this is helpful. Just one shade away from the white, just barely adding a touch of that black to it. And then I'm going to go ahead and paint into our lovely little barn here. And our line work will definitely peek through so we can go back in and reinforce that later. Again, this is our white, and then a tiny little touch of the black. Let's mix that up. A little touch of water. And let's just get a nice wash of that over the surface area. And it's so light that the little line work that we did for the barn will definitely peek through easily. And hello again to everybody out there joining us. We're so glad you're here. If you have any questions about the process, be sure to leave it in the comments. Always get back to those after the class. All right, we have a nice wash of color on the barn, so we're in good shape there. Let's go ahead and rinse out. Now we're gonna work on some pretty green for our wreath. Rinse out my mama, I spun it round and round and round to help release the paint, a little drag on the end of the bucket. Let's go ahead and dry off a little bit. All right, now let's go ahead and take some cadmium green. And then we already have some titanium white nearby, so I'm going to go ahead and just use my mama brush now. A little touch of the white, a little touch of that green. You can also darken it a little bit by adding a little touch of that viridian too. It almost gives a really pretty like pine green quality to it. That's really nice. So cadmium green, a little touch of our viridian, and then a little touch of our white. Mix all those together. That gives us a really pretty green for our wreath here. Use more of the end of the brush to go ahead and go around the outsides and cut in. So I hold it just like a pencil to do that. And then when I fill in, then I kind of turn the handle more over to the side 
to help give a nice thick coat. Also helps with any transparency that you might be seeing. Gives you better coverage over the surface area. So that first coat might even have some transparency, but you can always come back in and do a second coat. And then also remember to turn that handle of your brush over to the side. That'll help really cover it quite a bit better. Feather that out. Ooh, I forgot to do that part of the barn. Oops. All right, let's finish that out. So this is that just barely light, light gray color that we did the rest of the barn in. Should have done that earlier, but I missed it. So it's not too late. I'm going to go ahead and fill it in right now using my little bit brush. And just kind of lightly feather that out. You can also kind of feather those strokes out by coming back over with a bigger brush and kind of lightly touching that in a little bit. All right, let's rinse out. Dry off. Let's rinse out for everybody and dry off. All right, next up, we are going to do, let's do our little green trees over here too. All right, so we have this mixed up again. Let's do a little bit more. I've got my cadmium green and more of the viridian. And then a little touch of my white. Also for fun with lighter color trees, you can add a little bit of this really fun bright yellow green. Let's get a little touch of that nearby. That's mm, pretty. Okay. So we're going to use that little bit brush and first do our line work around the edges, kind of cut that in. And then turn that brush handle over to the side to fill that in. I actually like for this green to be quite a bit lighter because it has a stronger contrast against the turquoise sky, so it's nicer to see more of that bright yellow green pop out right in front. And again, we're just getting that foundational color down right over the top. We'll come back in and finish out with our ornaments and our outlines here at the very end. I'm finding another little area where I missed my barn. So I'm going to have to fill that in. Let's rinse out a little bit here, dry off, touch back into that really light gray that we still have from the barn, and I'm just going to barely touch into that little section right in there. I missed that spot earlier. I think I missed it here too. Okay, so we're all set now. Rinse out, dry off. All right, let's take a little bit and go back into that really light, light green. And paint into those little shapes. So we've got a nice foundation happening here. All right, awesome. All right, let's go ahead and rinse out, dry off. 
Now we're going to focus on our little bit of red here. So in your kit we have a beautiful color called Cadmium Red. So we'll do just a nice dime size amount of that. And it's very warm to begin with, so I'm going to add a little bit of our primary magenta to that. So get another little dime size amount of that. Come back in with our little bit brush. Let's work these two together. That will cool off that red, turn into more of like a jewel tone red. It's really pretty that way. And then we'll use our little bit brush again to go ahead and paint into that red bow. Really pretty great foundation there. Let's go ahead and rinse out again. All right, let's see here. So now it's time. We definitely have some red highlights, but I want this green to set up and dry a little bit more. Um, and so, what do I want to do? Let's see. Let's do some snowflakes in the sky. That'll be pretty. All right. So. I'm going to use my little bit brush again and some water and a little bit of this primary cyan blue and a little bit of our white. And we're going to do some like really fun retro looking snowflakes here. Very simple for the beginner. Now I'm doing a little twist here into the paint. So initially it just looks like you make a little plus sign and then a diagonal and then another diagonal. And it's very subtle but we'll see these kind of sprinkle through our sky here. So definitely very beginner friendly. Again plus sign then diagonal another diagonal. So we'll start with some blue ones and then we can also put some white ones down as well. And the white ones will actually be a little bit more noticeable. Alright, very fun, very easy. Alright, I rinsed out and I'm going to go back into the white here, just pure white paint. This is our titanium white, do a little twist into that. So again, the motion is a little plus and a little crisscross. And see, that's very fun. Have those sprinkled all about in the sky. All right, let's rinse out a little bit now.
Okay, still letting this have some set up and dry time. Let's go ahead and start to work into our black. I'm going to go ahead and use my little buddy brush. And if you have a really shaky hand, feel free to use the uh, permanent marker that comes with your kit to do some of that outlining first. It really does help. All right, I'm going to go ahead and press back and forth here into our Mars black. And then I can just hold it and just like a pencil. Work on that outline first here. And then I do have to turn the brush a little bit more over to the side to fill into the larger areas. And Little Buddy should just fit nicely right into this whole section here. You can just kind of run that through the shape. Okay, so that's the top of our barn there. And then we need thin lines. So I'm going to go ahead and apply a little bit more of that firm pressure. Let's get a nice thin line on the end again. That gives us more control. And so I can make those thin lines. So I'll do as much as I can with Little Buddy, and then we'll have to switch over to Little Bit to get into the really tiny areas. Progress. It's looking good. And actually, these little windows, we're going to black these out and then do a white highlight over the top. bit of wet paint there. So I'm going to take a little piece of tissue and I'll pick that up a little bit. foundation happening right now. Let's go ahead and rinse that out. Dry that off. Alright, next up I'm going to come back in with my little bit brush and just our pure black here. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure there's not too much excess water there. Go into the black. And then we'll start to do a fun little outline. 
all the way around this wreath. That will really make it kind of pop out to the front. And then we'll outline our little bow here. it out to a nice fine point, pull that back in, sometimes the brush can get a little full with paint so we want to twist it back out so it's nice and thin at the end, especially when we get to those really tiny little tapers. really pretty and then I can do just a few little soft curve lines right there in the center of the bow so those are little folds right there kind of just feels like a little parentheses that's the shape of it basically all right then we'll go ahead and outline these little trees make those kind of pop again And you are certainly more than welcome to change the style. I had just have some kind of fun modern trees happening here. It's kind of a new thing that I tried, but you can certainly make them look more realistic if you want to. Just by adding a little bit more texture to it. But this is definitely more of a stylized tree. And I'll get this little trunk right in here. Brush is a little full of paint, so let's go ahead and kind of twist this back out again. Make that thin again. So there's our cute little trees to begin with. Still want a little bit more of a setup on those. I put very thick paint on the bottom tree, so I still want that to set up just a tad more. And then let's do some a little bit of ornament on our wreath. So I'm going to use the bottom of the brush here. And I'm going to dip into the white just like that and then just go straight down you can vary the size of this dot if you want the dot to be smaller then you can just use a smaller brush just a really fun easy way to do a polka dot Lovely. I'm going to do a little wipe here. Now I can also do the very same thing into the red. Let's use a little bit of a smaller brush so you can see. Go right into that red. Got some water coming off here. I want to make sure that doesn't run. All right, let's try that again. So into that red. This is my little buddy brush this time before I use my mama brush. So this dot will be a little bit smaller. Of a, watch the end of it. Sometimes it picks up a little bit too much. So I got back on track there. And now it is very 
fully decorated. Alright, I think I'm ready now for my trees below here. I'm going to go ahead and go right back into the red. Same little buddy brush, dip right into that. I can still see my little trace peeking through from before. So I'm just going to fill into those little circles. So cute. All right, so we have our little ornaments now on our trees. And let's see here. Um, okay, so now I can do a little bit of white detail here. And I'm going to take my little bit brush. And I'm going to go ahead and just do another little thin line right around the inside here. a little bit of a window pane here. Real simple little lines. Alright. Precious. Now we can do the same dot trick again smallest brush this time we're going to go right into the white and we're going to do just a few little dots here on our rooftop and take these all the way around These are so fun and easy. It's such a neat way to do some pattern. Great for beginners. Alright, so that's a great start. And then let's go ahead and continue on with our little bit brush, but this time going back to the bristle side and just using tiny little strokes here to connect those. Barely touch down. And then my little um, line got a little thick there. If that happens, no worries. Clean up your brush, come back in with just a little touch of the black, and then let's just kind of correct that. Let's go ahead and fill that in a bit. There we go, we're all good now. It's all thinned out. All right, so now, this is very exciting. We're almost done. We're getting to the lettering now. Um, 
For beginners, remember you've got your permanent marker that comes with your kit, so you can use that to do your lettering. I highly recommend this if you have a shaky hand, it makes it much easier. Or you can at least start with that and then kind of follow up with just little touches of paint to give it a painterly look. I am going to go ahead and use my brush and paint this out. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little twist here. You can see that I can easily see um, my lettering. You will want to be very careful to not rest your hand into any of your work here. If you can, just wait for all this to set up and dry. I encourage that so that you don't mess up any of this. Otherwise, just be very careful. I'm going to take off my bra and my bracelet just in case here. Just in case. There we go. Because And then I'm going to just be very careful to keep my hand lifted here. And then I basically just go right over the top and just follow what I see. You can add a little bit of water to your paint to help thin it out, make it more fluid and easier to control. And again, one of the joys of working a flat surface like this is that you can add some water to it and then you don't have to worry about water runs, which is a relief, because if you do have it up on an easel, then you can get some water runs. So you do have to be careful with that if it's on an easel. And then watch those loops Make sure you go around the loop so you don't close off a critical section of the letter to where you can't tell what letter it is anymore. So I always make sure to really concentrate before I go around the loop and go around it and not inside of it. Right, so we've got great progress here. I'm also using my pinky to kind of rest the weight of my hand on when I can. That helps stabilize my hand as I go around these curves. Just want to make sure you put it in a dry spot. Put your pinky in a dry spot, that is. You don't want to disrupt any wet paint. Again, being really careful about my loops here. Going around them. Don't forget about that little top of the eye there. It's very peaceful, relaxing exercise. good y'all. Curve that around a little bit. All right, good job. And I think we are done. The only thing left to do now is sign your masterpiece. So you have a really tiny area to work in to do that. So I would actually even recommend your permanent marker at the very end here. And I'm going to do a really tiny little signature. Ta-da! There it is. Much easier for beginners. And it is done. It's so cute. I love it. It's our beautiful little white barn for Christmas. Yay! All right, so everything that you need to create this beautiful masterpiece is on our website, tipsyartist.com. We have a traceable pack. We also have an entire painting kit for this. Um, so we have everything that you need. But we just thank you all so much for joining us today. This was a lot of fun. It's a great idea to do as a little party at home, too, or just something to relax on your own for a gift. Um, but yes, so yes. So thank you again, and we will see you all very, very soon. And you all have a beautiful rest of the day. Toodles.